If you look at human history and then come to our history as in the history of our nation as in the Muslim nation you will notice that at the early stages of Islam at the dawn of Islam there were two main world powers empires or superpowers so on the one side was the Roman Empire and on the other side was the Persian Empire and both of these empires had reached the zenith of power so they boasted political stability military capability economical prosperity and an influence that covered much of the globe and they sandwiched somewhat in between these two was the Arab Peninsula And the Arab Peninsula was a hot, barren, harsh environment in which a segment of Arab society lived. They were scattered across an endless desert. As a people, they seemed to have nothing going for them. So disunited, uneducated, purposeless lives. And against all these odds, a people insignificant compared to the major civilizations, a civilization rose from the Arabs. And pretty soon it extended from Granada in Spain on one side to New Delhi on the other. The Makkah, which is center of life, the Quran describes it, Wadin Ghayridhi. Zara, a place unvegetated, so water didn't exist. Then you think, halas, no water, maybe they had something else. And look as you may, you won't find any of the ingredients that will make a civilization. So, you know, massive armies didn't exist, disciplined population didn't exist, human capital didn't exist, gold didn't exist. Food, nutrition, nourishment. And yet, out of Norway, the civilization not only survives, within a short few decades, it catches up to the other civilizations. And not only catches up to them, it overtakes them. And not only overtakes them, it flourishes in itself. So notice a few things, dear ones. Allah Rabbul Izza intervened in their lives by a prophet. Allah Rabbul Izza didn't intervene with gold. And he could have intervened with gold. For the children of Israel, Allah Rabbul Izza opened water. Strike, O Musa, with your staff, hit the rocks, the rocks gushed out water. Allah Rabbul Izzah could have brought food from the heaven for them that, listen people, you need nourishment, here's food, go and do my bidding. Allah Rabbul Izzah didn't. The only thing Allah Rabbul Izzah gave them, the intervention, was a prophet, a messenger. By definition, carrying a message. The message is the deen of Islam. Allah Rabbul Izzah changed their hearts and changed their minds and changed their conduct. And then the rest was organic. Like once you embody those changes that Allah sent, you can't help but become successful in this life and in the next. So when the Rasul was summoned to the office of prophethood, he came to the people with this message. O oh people, make the declaration, make the proclamation that there is none worthy of worship save one mighty Allah and success will be yours. 
This is a matter of the heart. So the Rasul came in a time where there are 360 idols in the Kaaba to an Arab population. You know, easily offended, sensitive creatures, swords by the side, tribal and deeply devout to these idols. Khalid ibn al-Walid remembers that my father sacrificed a hundred camels for a single idol. So Allah Rabbul Izzah sent the messenger to correct the belief first. So the Rasul came that declared that there is none worthy of worship. Like it was a pretty courageous statement to make. You know, for a people with 360 gods, you say none of this is true. There's just one God. And in a time where there's no police protection, but within the few years and those that kind of accepted Islam, the superstitious hocus pocus of idols disappeared and a true belief of the one mighty God entered the hearts. And dear ones, that did a few things. The first one is it gave access to the normal human being to the majesty of the Creator. For years they were turning to a rock that couldn't do anything. Now they had access to Allah, the Creator of the heavens and earth. And that is a game changer. So this simple people latched on to the Creator. And with that cam, all the treasures of the Creator. So here, first campaign, Badr. How many Muslims? 313. The opposition, a thousand strong. And scholars differ, but there was only eight swords amidst the Muslims. They hadn't come for a battle. They'd come to raid a caravan. You don't need so many weapons. You know, you... So Allah gives the reason of the cause of the success. But, you know, they were victorious, uprooted the enemy. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, that remember when you called out to your Lord and Allah accepted your call, your pleas, your du'as, and He said, I will help you with a thousand angels coming row after row. And you would think, khalas, you know, Muslim testimony, biased, you know, the Prophet's encouraging them, maybe. There were two people standing on a mountain nearby, non-Muslims, you know, waiting for the battle to finish so they could come down, collect the, what's fallen from the swords and this and that. And one of them died. So they asked him, why did your friend die? He said his heart burst. So why did his heart burst? He said, you were out of fear. What fear? He said, we heard the neighing of the horses from the clouds above and saw the sparks of their hooves. Do you see that what it did is it gave them first and foremost connection to the one above the heaven? And if Allah Rabbul Izzah is on your side, everything else will take care of itself. So lesson number one here, dear ones tonight. You will face difficulties and obstacles and challenges and hardships in life. Uh, keep Allah on your side and success is yours. Second part, Iman did something else as significant if not more. You see, yesterday, they were shackled by all types of fears. A life filled with fear and superstitions and shackled by false gods and false ideas. And, and Iman came and released them from it all. And they became what I call superhumans. Like you look at the Sahaba and the challenges they faced and the obstacles they conquered, a normal human can't do it. This is the battle of Muta. And the Prophet ﷺ has sent these people, uh, the first way, 
Zayd ibn Haritha and Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Instructions, listen, Zayd is in charge. If he falls, Ja'far will take the reins. If Ja'far falls, Abdullah ibn Rawaha will take the reins. If Abdullah ibn Rawaha falls, then choose a leader from yourselves. Now these Muslims were sent to odds you cannot imagine. Like the Prophet وسلم, sent a few thousand. And although historians differ, but one sum is that 150,000 came out against them. You would think they would go pale, you know, nervous, shake, worry, panic. Like it's as though they didn't know fear existed. So the first one, Zaid, fell. So Jafar holds the standard and gallops into the enemy. And then he thinks in difficulty the horse might run back. This is heard on battlefield him saying, Oh, the beauty and delight of Jannah and how close you are. Like just beyond this I am in Jannah. Do you understand? Like where he should be scared and nervous. But do you see what Iman does? It made the obstacles of this life nothing. The standard's about to fall. So they get it and they say, where's Abdullah ibn Rawaha? So Abdullah ibn Rawaha, who was the third commander in charge, he's, uh, uh, his cousin has just given him a piece of bone with a bit of meat on it. Like, here, have a bite. Uh, and he's, he's having this in the standard camp. Um, and for a second he tarried. And then he says this to himself and they hear him. Oh soul, why are you afraid of death? This is what you were seeking and you know what you desire is just in front of you. Then he tells himself, oh my soul, unless you know you die here, you will die somewhere else. So go face your destiny. And he galloped into it. And the Prophet sallallahu is narrating the story to the Sahaba uh, in Medina, like miles away. But my point is, Difficulties like that where you would, would have thought they would break it had no effect on them. Why? Because of the power of Iman. So Iman gave them the strength to succumb all types of odds. Uh, and this is just fear, hunger can. Um, and they, they overcame acute hunger. You know the stories. The Prophet ﷺ uh, is in the battle of Khandaq. Hunger was so bad that they, everyone was tying rocks on their bellies. They call it gastric bypass these days. It becomes smaller, shrinks, and then they don't feel hungry. These ones, they started to compare size of rocks. Who's got the biggest rock? And they looked at the Prophet Sallallahu three rocks on his blessed stomach because he's that hungry. Yet they're still working. And not only that, you hear this in the ranks, like in the Muslim ranks. Oh Allah, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been guided. We wouldn't know Salah and we wouldn't know Zakah. So make our feet firm when we meet our enemy and, and support us and strengthen us. Um, morale is high. But what's, what's their secret? Because it's not food, nor is it equipment, and not a small army. At this stage, Muslims of 1,400 fighting men, 10,000 plus have come against them. But their belief and their confidence and their iman and their fearlessness at such a level that it has set them free from the shackles that everyone else is shackled by. So the second outcome of iman is that it sets you free from the chain that shackles all the rest of humankind. Third, and I will race through this, is their Iman in Allah Rabbul Izza gave them a higher authority to listen to and obey. So everyone else goes through a difficulty in life. They don't know how to deal with it. You need guidance. So Allah Rabbul Izzah sent them guidance. And because of their belief in Allah, there was no longer any issue. There was full submission from their hearts. So it gave them through their Iman and through the instructions of the Quran, 
a law that they not only followed, but a law that they loved to follow. So they became a society of rules, and that is what creates a successful society. The next thing that Allah Rabbul Izzah did to them, and notice, this is all changing them. Allah didn't change their, their environment. He didn't change any external factors. He just changed them. The next thing, very important, is Allah Rabbul Izzah changed their heads, their minds, the way they think, their disposition. Can you imagine what life was for an Arab before Islam? And through this, Allah gave them purpose. So their every moment became about achieving the purpose, which is the river of the Lord and his Jannah. You would watch them wake up in the middle of the night and stand in long sessions of prayer. Very productive. Why? Because I'm trying to earn the pleasure of God. Uh, here, a beautiful case of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. The Prophet sallam, Abu Huraira narrates, the Rasul came to the Sahaba and asked, who amidst you woke up today fasting? So Abu Bakr said, I'm fasting. So he said, which one amidst you has gone to a funeral procession today? And he said, I have a prophet of Allah. So the Rasul said, which one amidst you has gone, found some poor person and given him food to, to eat. So he said, I have a prophet. And then he, the Prasul said, who has visited a sick person today? Well, I have today. And the scholars say this was by the time of Duha. Like it was in the morning still. He had already done all these things. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Why is he doing it? To please Allah. And through that gain Jannah. They used to look for opportunity. So dear ones, for our time, all the characteristics of success are internal. So success doesn't come from resources, nor does it come from climate, nor does it come from opportunities and situations. And success comes from inside of you. And it comes with the following. The first one, Iman. A mu'min can do what a non-believer can't ever do. Like just the fact that you can fast from morning till night in itself is a miracle. And we have little kids doing it. Through that iman, build a strong connection with Allah Rabbul Izzah. Because trust me, if Allah helps you, no one can overcome you. And if Allah forsakes you, there is none to hold your hands after that. Unshackle yourselves from the fears that shaitan has shackled you with. Uh, because shaitan makes you afraid. He makes you afraid of poverty. He encourages you towards indecency. All those are tricks of shaitan. Uh, release yourselves from it. Your rizq is with Allah Rabbul Izzah. And lastly, follow for your body the physical program of the Rasul and the physical guidance of deen including in your interactions with one another. This is what created their society against all odds. And they extended, as I say in my speeches, from Granada in Spain on one side to New Delhi in India on the other. And it wasn't a society like other societies that come. It was a society, an organization, a nation glowing with faith, glowing with knowledge, glowing with goodness, glowing with khair and barakah. May Allah guide and guard you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.